What's up everybody, Kyle, TTO Parts here. We've got another informative video for you. If you chose to watch this video, it is because you are facing the print head carriage position error. Don't fear, we're gonna go through a whole list of things that could be your problem. Now before we get into that list, let's go over the definition of print head carriage position error. E3236, print head carriage position error. The print head carriage has failed to return to its correct position. Switch the power off, remove the cassette. Check that the print head carriage movement is free from obstruction and ensure that its drive belt is not loose. Refit the cassette and switch the power on. If the problem persists, contact your maintenance engineer. I know, I know, you're ready to dive into the list, but before we do that, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for all your notifications so you never miss a video from us. All right, so starting off this list is the print head gap. Now I'm gonna use these because I like to use tools and we're gonna talk about how your printer is set up. So this is gonna simulate a pad or a roller. This is your printer. There is a distance, an ideal distance that the print head needs to travel. One to five millimeters is that distance. So you want one to five millimeter gap here. Anything less than that, you're gonna break some ribbon. Anything more than that, you are gonna get you guessed it, print head carriage position error. And number two, the print head and your peel arm. So this is an easy one to really test for. Um, what you're gonna do is grab your print head and just move it down. And what you're looking for is any interference. Grab my tools again, right? So let's pretend this is the peel arm. This is my print head. In normal operation, we're gonna clear that every time. But these peel arms tend to bend. So if you set it face down, the whole printer is sitting on top of that peel arm and it likes to get a little bit of a bend to it. And when that happens, every time you go down to print, you're gonna end up hitting that peel arm. So when you're testing this, make sure you look for that roller. Sometimes it's real obvious, sometimes it's not. And looking at that roller can help because when you look, you'll see the roller rotate. Number three. Now this is really a setup issue that shows up as print head carriage position error, but what we're talking about is the continuous application. Now, while you're running continuously, we all know that the print head needs to be on that center of the roller. If you're not, guess what you can get? Print head carriage position error, as well as many other problems. The reason why we do this is to inform you, the customer, and empower you guys to make better decisions about your printers. Uh, maybe that means cutting out your service contracts so you can fix these yourselves. Maybe that means you send it over to us at TTO Parts. Go to our website, check out the parts, check out our blogs, all that stuff is put up there to help you guys. Um, we also take customers with credit, so credit cards aren't the only way to get parts from us. And if you are a terms customer with us, there is a significant discount structure we offer. All right, number four, carriage movement. What we're doing here is we're gonna look at that carriage and see how it moves. I know, creative, right? So what we're really talking about is moving this thing back and forth. And we're trying to feel for any binding, anything that might be in the way, anything that can cause this air. Now, what you're really doing is looking at every part. We've seen slides, we've seen belts, we've seen pivot assemblies rocking back and forth. We've even seen them cracked. Uh, we've seen belt clamps completely cracked off and we've seen motors uh, not turn at all. The carriage motor that drives this direction of movement, not the one up and down for your print head, but for your carriage movement. That one completely seized up on one of my customers. And uh, we've seen the slides. You know, those slides are they're linear bearings that have decent seals on them, but they're not perfect. And over time, stuff likes to get inside those and the recirculating balls can no longer recirculate. Something has to give. We've seen timing belts just completely stripped off. They're just completely missing at the part where they're clamped. We've seen clamps that actually come loose. So th this is important with the, the pivot, uh, the, the print head belt clamp especially. And it's difficult to get at that one. You really have to take the whole unit off. But once you look at that, you'll see, um, you know, there's two screws holding this tiny clamp on there. If the clamp itself is still there, it can come loose. Sometimes it just cracks right in half. This one is gonna be you're gonna be diagnosing this one, right? So you're gonna look for a symptom, and the symptom is any of those parts that we listed. Number five, your film. Now this is a timing issue for intermittent printing. Your film cannot be moving while you're trying to print. Now generally you get other errors, uh, substrate speed error, ribbon pull through error sometimes, even ribbon break error sometimes, but you guessed it, print head carriage position error can get thrown when the print head 
is trying to print and the film below it is moving. Now, this isn't a continuous application, so this doesn't apply. Obviously, the film is always moving. Number six, printhead motor. Now, not the motor for the carriage, but we're gonna talk about the motor that drives the printhead up and down. Now, if you've gotten this far, we've eliminated the slide as a possibility. We've eliminated the pivots, the belts, everything there seems to be working in order, but we're still getting this error and we don't know why. Well, we've developed a test for this. So this test is gonna require a clarity config. Now, if you do not have that, that's all right. Reach out to me, I can send you a copy. Um, you don't know how to use it, that's okay too. We have some other videos online that you can check out that'll help you walk through the process of getting connected to a printer from a laptop using Clarity Config. And then once you're in there, we're gonna look at the cycle head position test. Now that's in the operations folder. And what this test is gonna do, it's gonna move the print head back and forth, back and forth along its path. And what I found through my testing is when the motor itself is a problem, generally within the first five minutes of this test, you're gonna fail. So what I like to do is when I suspect that motor is my issue, I'll run this test and I'll give it an hour time frame. If it's rocking back and forth quickly, I think it's time to move on because it's not the print head motor. Number seven, wrapping up this list, you guessed it, we've gone through everything and we still don't know why we're getting print head carriage position error. Time to check the main PCB. Now I know it's expensive to have these on hand, that's why we offer the free repair services. So what we'll do is a customer will call us, they got a printer down, they need it fixed, they don't know what it is, they'll send it to us, we take a look at it, say, all right, well, I got all the parts here, I can just throw them in the printer, figure out what it is that's causing it. Send your free estimate, no labor, you decide, all right, yeah, I'm gonna go through with this repair with these guys, or I want my printer back, whatever you guys wanna do. But what we have found with the main PCB, there's two things, number one, if you have just replaced your main board and you're starting to finally see this printhead carriage position here we've spent all this time talking about, well, I'm ashamed to say this, but I did it myself and I might as well share it with you. If you cross an encoder wire or a motor wire when you're reassembling, which is kind of easy to do, you gotta, I mean, I wasn't being careful, but if you're careful, you won't do it. If you're not careful, you can swap these two. And then basically, you know, it's gonna think it's supposed to move one way, the encoder says it's not moving that way, but ah, right away, you'll get this carriage position here. And you'll get it before you even get to printing. You're gonna get it as soon as you put your cassette on to start the calibration, right? Because the motor's gonna clip, uh, the, the mandrel's gonna clip into your motors, and then the next step is the carriage is gonna start moving. And that's where it's gonna say, ah, I don't know. Part two of that is, oh, everything looks good. I'm just getting this air. I've checked everything. I've checked the slide, I've checked the belts, I've checked all the motors. What could it be? Sometimes it is that board. I appreciate you all sticking around. Hope you learned a little bit. Any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can go to the website. There's a contact us page. You can contact us here through YouTube. Whatever's easier for you, we're here to help. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more.